Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to Manifested e-learning platform. I'm your chemistry teacher, Monique Nyaga. In this lesson, we still want to discuss the energy changes during melting and boiling. If you remember in our previous lesson, we were illustrating the effects of change, what happens when ice is heated to become a liquid and this liquid is heated to become a gas. We defined two important terms which were latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. We said latent heat of fusion is a heat energy required to melt a certain amount of a solid to a liquid at its melting point. The heat energy required to melt a certain amount of a solid to a liquid at its melting point. That is what you said as, or that is what you defined as a, as the heat of fusion or the latent heat of fusion. And again, we said that if you want to melt one molar, or if you are melting one molar of a solid into a liquid, then that is called the molar heat of fusion. So the molar heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy required to melt one mole of a solid to a liquid at its melting point. That is what you call the molar heat of fusion. And the molar heat of vaporization, or to start with the latent heat of vaporization, we said that this is the heat energy required to, to convert a certain amount of a liquid into a gas at its boiling point. The heat energy required to, to the heat the heat energy required by a certain amount of a liquid to convert it into a gas. That is what you called the latent heat of vaporization. And we said the molar heat of vaporization is the heat energy required to convert one mole of a liquid to a gas at its boiling point. And you give the example of water, that water, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So the molar heat of vaporization will be the amount of heat you require to boil 18 grams of water, because one mole of water is 18 grams, the amount of heat energy required to, to boil 18 grams of water at, at its boiling point. Again, this molar heat of fusion and molar heat of vaporization can be used to illustrate the strength of intermolecular forces which are holding the particles together. If the molar heat of fusion is high, then it means that melting this liquid will require more heat because the intermolecular forces of attraction are stronger. And if the molar heat of vaporization again is high, then it also means that the intermolecular forces of attraction are also strong. So when the molar heat of fusion and the molar heat of vaporization are low, it means the intermolecular forces of attraction are low. And when they are high, it now means that the intermolecular forces holding the molecules together are strong. With me, I have two examples. So these are the molar heat of fusion and vaporization. 
So we have the compound, we have the molar heat of fusion, which is measured in kilojoules, kilojoules per mole. Then you have the molar heat of vaporization, again measured in kilojoules per mole. And you have the melting point, which is in, in Kelvin. The first compound is water. The molar heat of fusion is 6.02. The molar heat of vaporization in kilojoules per mole is 40.7. And the melting point of that water is 273 Kelvin. Come to ethanol. The molar heat of fusion of ethanol is 2.39. The molar heat of vaporization of ethanol is 18.7. And the melting point of ethanol is 188. This one is showing that if you start here, that the heat of fusion for water is 6.02, and the ethanol is, is 2.39. So this shows that the molar heat of fusion of water is higher than the molar heat of fusion of ethanol. Uh, that again shows the difference in their melting point. So when the molar heat of fusion is high, then the melting point is high. When the molar heat of fusion is low, then the melting point is also low. And that's why we have 6.02, the melting point is 273, and we have 2.39, and the melting point is 188. Kelvin. So it's showing the strength of the intermolecular forces that in water, the intermolecular forces are stronger in water than ethanol. And that's why ethanol has a lower melting point compared to water. If it comes to molar heat of vaporization, in water it's 40.7 and in ethanol it is 18. Point Seven. Again, the, molar, the higher the molar heat of vaporization, then the higher the melting point of that substance. So you have the molar heat of vaporization, which is 40.7 for water, and the melting point is 273, and we have 18.7 kilojoules per mole of ethanol, and the melting point is 188. So it also, just like in the molar heat of fusion, in the molar heat of vaporization also, that the higher the molar heat of vaporization, then the higher the melting point of that substance. That is what I wanted you to understand very well in this topic. So you should be able to distinguish or you should be able to explain the relationship between one, molar heat of fusion and the melting point. And second, molar heat of vaporization and the melting point. That relationship, you should get it so clearly. And I've explained that very well. And there's a table again which is showing you so clearly the relationship between the molar heat of fusion and the molar heat of vaporization. So the lower the molar heat of fusion, then the lower the melting point, and the higher the molar heat of fusion, the higher the melting point. So the same thing to the molar heat of vaporization, but the higher the molar heat of vaporization, the higher the melting point, and the lower the molar heat of vaporization, the lower the melting point. And this is brought about by the intermolecular forces of attraction which are holding these particles together. That when these intermolecular forces of attraction are stronger, then the melting point is high. If these intermolecular forces of attraction are weaker, then the lower the melting point. I hope you get that so clearly. That is what I wanted you to understand in this lesson. I will leave you with this assignment. The assignment is
explain the relationship in the following. Number A, molar heat of fusion. Molar heat of fusion and melting point. And second, Molar heat of vaporization and the melting point. Thank you all for being part of this lesson. In our next lesson, we'll be, dis we'll be discussing the enthalpy changes in board breaking and bond formation. Thank you. Mm -hmm.